Happy Memorial Day weekend. We are so glad that you're in the building today. If you are a, uh, a family that has lost someone in service, we honor you today. I hope that over the next 24 hours uh, that perhaps we, we take some time to remember those who gave their life so that we can have uh, the freedoms that we have, the freedoms to be able to come in church and sing songs and, and talk about God's word. I don't know about you, but I just, I just don't take that stuff for granted. We are a privilege to be in the building today. Uh, my name is Ryan. For those of you, if, it, if it's your uh, first time here at Covenant Church, uh, it's our honor that you would spend a little bit of your weekend with us. We've been in a series on the grace of God and the different components of it. It's called Got Grace with the question mark. And I believe that today's message is going to add value to your life. Dare I say that I believe that today's message might even provide some direction for your life. Over, over the past couple of weeks, uh, we first heard from Pastor Mike. Uh, he took us all the way back to the garden. Uh, for those of you who haven't been to Bible school, you are in Bible school when you show up to Covenant Church week in and week out, okay? Like the stuff you're getting for free is stuff a lot of people pay for. So if you miss Pastor Mike's message, you don't want to miss that. And then Pastor Amy uh, followed that up with a, a, a message last week that I just think was just phenomenal. There was this line in it that has just stuck with me all week long, and I just keep using it over and over. And, and she says, sometimes you find yourself standing in a pile of shift. Make sure you pronounce that F, okay? <laughs> but when she said it, I just went, yes! Yes, like, and that wasn't most people's takeaway, but it was my takeaway, right? And I was just like, yes, I find myself standing in a pile of shift all the time because things are constantly changing. And you want to know what you need to get through your pile of shift? <laughs> the grace of God, you know? And I just think like, yes. So if you missed that message, I encourage you to go back and check, check that out. Here's what I want to do today. I think that there's a, there's a time in our life where we can all find ourselves in this position where we're trying to figure out what to do next. We're trying to understand what it is that, that God has for our life. Should I go left? Should I go right? Should I take this job? Should I date this person? Should I marry this person? And so um, I want to begin today in the letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome. Uh, the reason I like the book of Romans is because uh, it was a godless culture. This is first century Christianity, and people are trying to figure out, how do I be Christians in a godless society? You might think, oh, it's tough to be a Christian at my job, or it's tough to be a Christian at my school, or tough to be a Christian in America. I would encourage you to read the book of Romans, because he's giving them insight to say, hey, here's, here's how you live out your Christian values right where you're at in a culture that does not support it all the time. And so I love that in Romans chapter 12, uh, the Apostle Paul begins to unpack what it looks like to walk in God's will. This is what it says. It says in verse, uh, verse 1, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Then it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now watch this. It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What I don't know about you, what I want to know about me, is that there are three wills that are at war with your heart, your mind, and your soul. The first kind of will that is in this tug of war is, well, well it's our will. This is what we want to do. This is, what, this is when we want to do it and how we want to do it. This is our way or the highway. This is who we want to date, where we want to work, the car we want to drive, the, the neighborhood we want to live in. This is all about me, myself, and I. I have a will and you have a will. And it's easy to subscribe to that way of living and of going, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do whatever I want to do. But then you don't just have your will. Then you have other people's will. This is where your parents, your family members, classmates, neighbors, colleagues, and even social media get to determine the trajectory of your life. Um, I, I love the uh, Andre Agassi story, who's one of the greatest tennis players of all time. He wrote in his memoir in 2009 something that shocked the sports world. We found out, if you, if you ever get a chance to read it, he reveals something that is completely unbelievable. 
We find out in, in, in his memoir called Open that Andre Agassi does not like tennis. <laughs> it's like, whoa, 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 huh? well, it's like Michael Jordan not liking basketball. It's like, I don't understand. What do you mean? What we found out in his memoir is that Andre Agassi's daddy liked tennis and forced him to like tennis. I have the sinking suspicion that there is somebody underneath the sound of my voice that is watching online who has found themselves deeply under the expectations and wills of other people, and it is crushing your soul. The expectations that other people have put on you, and nothing's ever good enough for them. You can't make enough money. You can't drive a nice enough car. Your house is never going to be big enough. You'll never be skinny enough. You'll never be pretty enough. You'll never be successful enough for them. And those expectations are crushing you. Might I give you the third option that I just think we all should submit to? And that would be God's will. This is where you find yourself fully surrendered to whatever God wants to do in your life. This is where you wake up and go, God, who do you want me to date? God, God where, 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 do you, where do you want me to work? Where, where do you want me to live? And, and let me just tell you this. There is no peace like the will of God in your life. There is no, there is no better decision that you can make than going, man, it, well, well, God, God put this on my heart. God, God, God led me here. In fact, the apostle Paul describes God's will as three things. Good, pleasing, and the last word is especially what I love, Perfect. So let's just say you're not a Christian, just for a minute, okay? I would tell you, even though you're not a Christian, it would be good for you to at least know you've got options when it comes to wills, yours, other people's, and God's. And here's the deal. Let's just say your will has gotten you somewhere. The one thing you can never claim about your will or your mama's is that it's perfect. So if I'm you and I'm not a Christian, I would at least want to know, you mean God's got a will for me? Yeah, I would at least want to know what it is just so you can compare options. And let me just tell you, spoiler alert, his is going to be better than yours. I promise you that. So if you think that your plan for your life is better than God's, you are sadly mistaken. And so I think every person here today watching online should be trying to uncover God's will for their life. To be going, man, which, 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 direction, which direction should I go? So what the Apostle Paul reveals to us is that we cannot discern the future plans of God with old patterns of thinking. You cannot discern the future plans of God with old patterns of thinking. And whenever I begin to talk to people about God's calling on their life, the, the, the phrase that is used the most with me is, well, well why in the... The way I grew up, see, in my neighborhood, well, my, my dad was an alcoholic, hey, I was a single parent home, my dad, my mom, no dad, no mom, I was the oldest, I was the middle child, I was the youngest, my neighborhood, the school I went to, this coach, this teacher, the guy I dated, the woman I married, my kid, I'm, I just sit with way too many people who want to dwell on where they've Ben, let's talk about where you're going and how things could be. And I think the way that we get past our past is nothing but the grace of God. If you've got a past needing to get over today, do you got grace? Because you're going to need it. Let me tell you how a very real adversary of your soul would love to defeat you. Making you believe that you have to take your cues from your past before you step into your destiny. Let me ask you this question. Whose permission are you waiting for to be who God has called you to be? Are you waiting for somebody's permission? Are you waiting for a platform? Are you waiting for more followers? Like, like what is it that you're waiting for to say yes to God? And so there are people that just live their Christian life with these apprehensions. I'm just going to stay in the safe zone. And I get why somebody would want to think that way. But the invitation today is to get a mind renewed to see your life a little bit different so that you can make a difference. At Covenant Church, our heart is that people would know God. Like that you would know G 
G-O-D, that we would train you in a way for you to be able to study God's word for yourself to say, God, who are you? Show, reveal yourself to me and for you to know him intimately so that then you can find freedom for your soul. So for these things that might be holding you back, for these limitations that might be on your mindset, for us, we're trying to remove the lid off of what we believe God could do with your life. And thirdly, we want you to discover your purpose. I want you to know why you're on the planet. You were put here for a reason. So then you can indeed make a difference. And so my thesis for today's message is found in Romans 12, verse 3. It says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. What I want you to know today is this. We're all in this thing together. There's a gift living on the inside of you that I desperately need. And there's a gift living on the inside of me that you desperately need. Guess what? We are all a part of the body of Christ. Now, now here's what's funny to me. And I just laugh anytime I hear this. One of my favorite conversations is to hear a church person, a Christian, bashing the church. The reason I think it's funny is because you're talking about yourself. And then it's like, all oh, these people at the church. I'm like, you was at the church too, so you in there with us. And it's funny because they're like, oh, people at Covenant. You'd be like, well, you go to Covenant, so you, that's, that's technically you're talking about yourself. I was, I, was on this, I was on this train, and uh, this guy, he sees my shoes. He says, ooh, them some church shoes. I said, have you been to church lately? I'm just thinking this is an opportunity to have a conversation with the guy. He said, I went, but I don't like church people. I said, why? He said, because they're all hypocrites. I said, they are? He said, they aren't? I went, well, I go all the time. I ain't met them. I don't know. You tell me. What's your experience? He says, well, when I went, it was like that. But wait, when you went, weren't you there? He said, yeah. I said, then how do you know someone didn't come to the same conclusion about you when you were there? Now, I mean, it, it, there's this thing where it's like people can come to church and go, well, nobody said hi to me. Did you say hi to somebody? If nobody said hi to you when, when, some, when you came to church today, how do you know you're not sitting next to somebody else that didn't say hi, that nobody said hi to them either? You know what will solve the problem? If everybody just looked to the right, looked at the left and said hi, boom, game over, okay? <laughs> hi, hey, how are you? You good? Bam, problem solved. But how do you know somebody ain't sitting next to you? You ain't said hi to nobody. Be careful not becoming guilty of your biggest complaint. You are the church. It ain't, oh, no, 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 you the church. No, 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 no. We are in this thing together. I've found that a lot of people that don't want to be Christians or stop being Christians, that happened because they encountered a Christian. They dated one, they worked for one, they lived next to one. I mean, they married one. I mean, like they find themselves in these situations where they're kind of going, man, I, I got this. I got this thing with church. It's like, hey, we're, we're in this thing. We're in this thing together. And, and, and this is a verse you, you got to see. This is, this is the crux of today. It says, well, in verse 6, it says, we have different gifts. We have different gifts. All gifted. Every last person here today, watching today, gifted. According to the grace. According to the grace given each of us, each and every one of us has been given a, a grace to do something. Now, I just have to wonder, and again, let's just talk Dallas. Let's just talk DFW just for a minute. We're in the Bible Belt. And a lot of people do a lot of church shopping and church comparing, right? This church does this, and they got good worship, and they got this speaker, and they got, 
And then people kind of choose church based off of their preferences, you know. Do they teach the word in a way that I feel like prolificates the word of God? Okay, all right, that's cool. All right, I want somewhere with some meat. Okay, do they, do they, uh, do they linger in worship? I just like to just linger a little bit. Like everybody's kind of got their preferences. Do we sing your favorite songs? Do, do we have uh, Mickey Mouse in, in the children's ministry? Do, I mean, everybody's got their thing of like, all right, do, does this serve us best? Which I'm not going to knock you for that because that's 2022 in the Bible Belt. I get it. I just wonder if we just use this as a filter where we said, um, when looking at a church, I'm not just looking at what they can do for me, but imagine if you walked into a church and said, God, is this a place that me and my family could serve? God, is this a place where the gifts you have graced my life with can be developed and utilized. I think we always see church just a little bit different. Um, We have a a bunch of men that just returned uh, from the return, and uh, we celebrate you guys today. And I just think about the different men that were there, and I think about the different men that served there. Guess what? They have different gifts, and you've never heard of most of them. Some of them are there just cooking. For other men to say, hey, I realize you're going on a journey with God for a few days and we want to make sure you eat good. And guess what? They're simply, they're, they've walked into a place and going, I'm not just going to be a consumer Christian. I'm going to be somebody that contributes. And so this is one component of grace that I want you to consider. That grace is this idea of what is difficult for others that comes natural for you. What is difficult for others comes natural for you. And so what the Apostle Paul does is going, hey, I realize that you're a church in Rome and you're trying to figure out what in the world that God wants to do with your life. Let me tell you that God has graced your life with something to add value to the body of Christ. And so what I want to do is I want to go through Romans chapter 12 and I want to go through each gift that the Apostle Paul lists. Every time I bring up a gift, here's what I believe is going to happen. For somebody, something's going to resonate with you. My prayer is that something would be awakened in you. I pray to God that gifts are awakened and people begin to thrive in them today. That's my prayer. Here's the deal. As I go through each one, this is my rule of thumb, okay? We were sitting down having coffee. If I came to your house for dinner, I would say, hey, you start with Romans 12 and and you should just practice all of them, okay? And if it don't go well, move on to the next one, okay? Okay? Just try some stuff. Because why? What did the Apostle Paul say? He says, so that you can test and approve. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how much stuff I've tried that maybe I shouldn't have tried, but I said, let's just see what happens. One time I ran sound for a service. It was the worst service we've ever had in our life. I said, that ain't for me. Time to move on. Let's see. Oh, I can preach. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me do that. How about y'all put the mic on me? How about I not? Like, like you might have to test and Approved. Now, the very first gift that the Apostle Paul brings up, I wish it was the last one because he starts off pretty heavy. And if you get this one wrong, it could be a long day for you. Um, Romans 12 verse 6 says, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. You ever met somebody that thought they had this gift, but they didn't? It's the worst. Oh, it's the worst because you... You can't talk to them after they are false prophet. You know what I'm saying? In two weeks, a job is coming. Two months later, you're like, I'm still unemployed. So (laughs) who are you? Why why, why are we doing this? Now, well, prophecy can get a, a super spiritual rap, but I think that prophecy is simply God inspired words. It's just simply God inspired words. Sometimes you allow ego to get into it. You want to walk up to people and go, thus saith the Lord. God told me to tell you. Why are you doing all of that? You don't need all that dramatization to just encourage somebody with God-inspired words. Calm down. It is not that serious, but you want to practice. Practice God-inspired words. If you're single, do not be walking up to people and be like, God told me, baby. No, 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 no. Do you want to know what this gift requires? Stillness. 
sitting still long enough to say, and, and, and I just want everybody to practice this this week. I think all of us can do this. We're putting the cookies on the bottom shelf for you, okay? I believe God's graced us for this. Just this week to go, God, do you want to say anything to anybody in my life through me? Is there anything you want to say to anybody in my life through me? Now, some of you be like, oh, yeah, Lord, want me to tell something to my spouse. I got a few words for him. Yes, God told me to tell you to get your act together. No, 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 no. Don't abuse your gift. But sit still. I mean, just, you know what this requires? It requires walking slow through work. It requires walking slow through school. It requires walking slow through the gym. Lord, is there anybody here today that you want me to speak to. And some of the most meaningful conversations you'll ever have in your life is when you look somebody else in the eyes. And sometimes it's as simple as this. I have no idea why God put you on my heart, but you must be, there must be something special going on in your life. How are you? Amen. The Lord just wanted me to encourage you today. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it has to be mountaintop burning bush, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think we need talking donkey level prophecy. I think, I think we could just go, God, would you inspire me this week? Would you put a fire on the inside of my belly for somebody in my life? I mean, you just, you just do this. You do this every day. Oh, yesterday, my, my beautiful wife, she's like, Ryan, you want a couple hours to yourself in this house? I said, I would love a couple hours to myself in this house. I didn't even know what to do with myself. I'm walking around this house. I'm like, well, I don't know. Do I watch TV? Do I, do I write another sermon? Do I, like, I'm like, I just, my house is so quiet. We got two beautiful boys, but they just fill up the noise in our house, and we love the noise, but we also love when there's no noise. And so it's like, we, and I just sat there and I was like, Lord, we're, I said, Lord, I need your direction right now. I don't know what to do. Should I eat? Should I? Take a nap? Should I? I feel like I got lots of options, good options, you know? And I just found myself at, at our piano, and I just started worshiping the Lord. And I just said, Lord, in this stillness, in this quiet place where we just, I just invite your presence to be in our home. And God, would you just, would you give me God-inspired words for Covenant Church tomorrow? Would you just, would you just give me something that's not in my notes? Would you just, I don't know who, I don't know when, but Lord, would I just, would you just fill me with your spirit? I think somebody needs, not a Ryan talk, I think somebody needs a God talk. I think somebody needs something that is completely inspired by the Holy, Holy Spirit. And you know what it, what it required? Just stillness. Some of our lives are so busy, we don't ever get stillness. So if, if you're trying to discover your purpose today, if you're trying to figure out what, what your gift is, try prophesying. If that goes bad, <laughs> go to verse 7, okay? If it is serving, then serve. Like if you're terrible at prophesying and you just got it wrong, you got nervous, you started sweating, you started adding stuff in there that God didn't say, okay, then you should just move on to serving, okay? All of us can do this one. You can hold the door. You're like, nah, man, my wrist, man, I got a carpal. So no, 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 no. All of us can serve. All of us can, can feed somebody. All of us can pack a lunch. I mean, all of us can, can serve in some capacity. And what I love is that there are some people who are truly graced to serve. Like they're really, really Good at like, like when they're asked to serve, something comes alive in them. And then there's some of us, when we get asked to serve, we, we begrudgingly serve. We're like, all right, whatever, yeah. Like, but there are some people, like, God has graced them with that, especially in children's ministry. Listen, parents love their kids, but be a little bit too excited to drop their kids off at children's ministry. They're like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Baby crying and everything. Yeah, he, he, he'll stop. He'll stop in like four minutes, I promise. I promise. He, he'll stop in like four. He got a little sippy cup. Get that to him. And I promise you, I'll be back. All right? Praying service go long. Take your time, Ryan. Take your time, buddy. We good. We good. You're just happy to have some peace and quiet. I know one girl that used to go to both services. Like, yeah, you can have my kids for like three hours. Go ahead. Take them. Take them. I'll be back. I ain't going to leave them. Leave them here. I'm just running lunch real fast. I'll be back. That's illegal. Stop leaving your kids here at the church. Okay? Listen.
They've been graced. I'm, I'm amazed at some of these volunteers that take care of our babies. And they take care of like 25 at the same time. They, they're gifted. Because I can barely handle our two. And I'll be like, hey, man, y'all gonna, somebody going to have to come help me. This is crazy. But they can handle 25. At, and they're not bothered by it. Like, they're chilling. Like, they're happy. But if I were to invite them to come preach on the stage, they'd be like, oh, hey, whoa, 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 we ain't doing that. And if they invited me to watch all them kids, I'd be like, y'all better call 911. These kids not going to make it. <laughs> but I think all of us should have a heart to serve in some way, shape, or form. There's a gift living on the inside of you. And our hope and our prayer is that this would be a place where you can develop that and thrive in that. Now, then the Apostle Paul says this. He says, if it is teaching, teach. A couple notes. It's harder than it looks, number one. Number two, when you think about teaching, don't think of a stage. Think of a heart. Because a lot of people desire the stage, but they don't have the integrity to handle the stage. A lot of people will de desire a crowd, but they don't have the depth of a relationship with the Lord to actually have a revelation. And so, so for you, you, you want to just ask yourself, like, if I, if I have the gift to teach, I would say, teach what? What are you teaching? Like, if, if, if we're sitting in your class, what do we get when we get you? Uh, one, one, of the, one of the ways that I, I discovered, um, again, just practicing. I've tried all of these, by the way, okay? I failed at some and, and have won at some, okay? This, this is testing and approving. Well, when I read scripture, understanding comes pretty quickly. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm rarely confused when reading scripture, and so I love to, and a lot of people that I talk to, they're like, man, dude, I just, I just don't understand. And then I'll be like, well, hey, have you ever thought about it like this? They're like, oh, that makes sense. I'm like, that's why I love doing what I do. But, but don't think, don't think rows. Don't think sanctuaries. Think circles. Like if you have a desire to teach, you should be a small group leader. And guess what? We have a training for that. We'll equip you. And guess what? If you can't teach five, you cannot teach 5,000. It's just not going to happen. And again, what are those moments for? Practice. Practice. To be able to go, man, can I, can I teach my kids, David and Goliath? How are you going to teach grown people, David and Goliath? You can't teach a seven-year-old, David and Goliath. You better take a rock to the, to the forehead and fall to the ground. You better get it together. <laughs> what are you doing? You're working on your teaching skills. I believe God's put some, some words in some people's lives. And you might be going, man, I want to go to a church where I can get a word. But what if you could go to a church where you could give one to the person on your right and the person on your left? But once again, ladies and gentlemen, the more gifted you are, the more ego you have to remove. So we got to take our ego away from it because some of us like to be picky and choosy where, well, well I, I'll, I'll teach if I, can, if I can get the mic. Well, well, sometimes the room you're in doesn't require one. So be faithful there. Study there. Treat it like it's 5,000 going, no, no. The, the, people in your small group should be like, hey, man, I think you might have overprepared for this one. I didn't know you was coming here with all this, man. Where you get all that Greek and Hebrew from, man? You, what, what you do? Like, you should be going, yeah, I'm working on my gift. Because God's graced me to do something. And I don't play games with my gift. Now, Let's say you get an opportunity to teach and it goes horrible. Move on to the next one, which is this. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Some of us have trouble with this one. We, don't, we just don't know how to be nice to save our life. Compliments hurt our teeth when we give them to other people. You ever just met somebody that's just so mad? You just be like, why are you so mad, bro? Mad at everybody and everything. It don't matter who you bring up. It don't matter what you talk about. They got a problem with something and somebody. And you just want to be like, hey, bro, what did we all do at the same time to make you so mad at all of us? We have not met together to conspire against your life. In fact, we're not even paying attention to your life that much for you to be this mad at us. 
You ought to encourage somebody, all right? Life is not that bad. It might be bad, but it ain't that bad. Listen, you need to start walking in your gift. But then there are those people in our life who've been graced with this one. It's like they've been graced with rose-colored glasses. Dare I say, they've been graced with God-colored glasses. That no matter what is going on, they see good. No matter what's going on, they got a song to sing. No matter what's going on, God's good, isn't he? You'd be like, uh, are you looking around? They're like, yeah, but I can see God's goodness right there. Sometimes you complain in front of them like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, and they go, ain't God good? You go, what, 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 what? They go, you're still standing. You're here. It's funny when people are at church going, I just don't know what God's going to do in my life. I'm like, there's a lot of other places you could be. But somehow God has brought you right here, right now for a reason. Contrary to popular belief, you are not just here visiting your family. Contrary to popular belief, you are not just doing your religious tradition to just show up at church. I believe that you are here for a reason to uncover the gift God has put on the inside of you. And sometimes, you ever just been encouraged by somebody's presence? Like some people give you an anxious existence when they walk in the door. You'd be like, oh man, why am I tense? You ain't even said nothing, my God. <laughs> and then there's just some people that just walk in and you just like, hey, Paul's here. Like, that's my God. Like, you're you just happy for, for no reason. You're just like, G's here right now. Like, oh, that's my homie, man. Like, yeah, that, that's, he's, he's here. Some of you, you have the gift of smiling. Don't lose your gift. In fact, if that is your gift, we need you at the front door. We need you on the front lines. Sometimes you got mean people holding the door. Come to Covenant Church. You need to be in security, bro. Come on, move. You've been graced for something else. Holding the sign. Welcome. To home. Wake up. What are you doing here? Who, 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 who scheduled you this morning, huh? How'd you, how did you get this role? Can we find a different role? We put a smile on your face or something. And this is some people, you just can't ruin their day to save their life. You're like, there's nothing you can do. They're just like, they just got to smile. If that's you, we got a place for you. We got a bunch of doors here. We need you. Because there are so many people that have had the roughest week of their life. And they need to walk into a place and know that there's hope for their soul. And so some, here's the beautiful thing. Some of you were serving this morning and you had a smile on your face when you did it and you gave somebody hope before one song was sung or one verse was read. You've been graced with a gift. So let's just say you've tried a few things already, right? You tried prophesying, that did not go well for you, okay? You tried serving, you, you, that didn't go well for you. You tried teaching, that didn't go well for you. You, you tried encouraging people, and, and you gave them a backhanded compliment, like, man, you look like you done lost some weight. You're like, you trying to say I was big before? You're like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this again. I tried. I'm bad at this, okay? You move on to the next one. Romans 12, verse 8, it says, if it is giving, then give generously. I've learned that there are some people who can give, and it's not a thing. You ever had somebody give with strings attached? It's like, yeah, I'm going to be generous, but I'm going to watch you the whole time and see what you do with it. What you, what, what, what's going on over here, huh? And then there's some people, as Jesus describes it, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. They live open-handed. You need something? Yeah, sure, here, here's the go. This is what our church hangs our hat on, generosity. It's like, man, if we could figure out a way to give, if we could go above and beyond for somebody, hey, let's, it's God's anyways. Like, why am I... Why? Why would I want to live like this? But I know some people, they've just been graced with the gift of generosity. I had a friend the other day, I, I put out a post on Facebook. I said, hey, man, I'm looking for a barber in Atlanta, all right? I had a bunch of speaking gigs in Atlanta. I was like, I need, I need fade. And, and, and my buddy's like, hey, I, got, I, I found the guy. I was like, oh, man, that's great. He goes, hey, and I paid him. Gave him $150 for one haircut. I said, who do you think he cutting? They said, like, where, 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 where we go? You could have gave me like 80 of it, and I could have slid him. A little bit like, like, come on, bro. And, and, 
And a long story short, I, I couldn't make the appointment. And so I, I said, man, I'm so, so sorry, man. I don't ever want to abuse your generosity, man. I just, I really appreciate it. I, I said, man, just some things came up with this thing I'm doing. And, and he just said something to me that just blessed me. He said, right, it's just money. I said, it's just money to who? You got it like that? <laughs> He's not super wealthy. He's just super generous. He goes, man, let's bless a barber today. Let's, let's. Isn't that the grace of God? You get something for nothing. Ah, let him have it. I was just like, imagine if we were just more like that. You know, I think the hard thing for a lot of people when it comes to generosity is they think it has something to do with their financial situation. It actually doesn't. It has everything to do with your heart. Why? Because I know high schoolers who are generous and I know people who make six figures who are stingy. So it has nothing to do with your, with your tax bracket. It has everything to do with your heart. If you have a heart that is willing to be generous, I believe God will resource that every single time. So, and again, it's just, is this, is this your gift? The last, the, the second to last thing that, that Paul mentions is Romans 12, 8. It says, if it is to lead, do it diligently. Are you a leader? Man, doesn't our world need more leaders? Ones that have been graced by God to do so. How do you know if you have a leadership gift? It's not if you just like being in charge of people. Being power hungry does not make you a good leader. Do you add value to people's lives? Can you cast a compelling vision that other people want to rally around and say, okay, I want to go where you're going. Can you put somebody on a mission? Can you cast a vision that people say, I want to get on that train? In other words, if we're following you, where are we going? And are we going to a better place? Some of you, you've been graced with that gift. And this last gift, I think, is the one the world needs the most. Romans 12, 8 says, if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You ever met those people that get over stuff fast? And you, we've also met those people that don't get over stuff for 10 years. Which one are you? There are some people that just go, ah, give them a break. They've been graced with a gift. I can just imagine if Republicans had this gift and if Democrats had this gift. Can you imagine if they just said, I don't know that I want to spend the rest of my life trying to prove other people wrong. I mean, just imagine if, if, if we all just said, you know what? I'm going to have mercy. And sometimes we give mercy begrudgingly. Oh, I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> the Apostle Paul says, hey, if you really want to make a difference in Rome, show them mercy and do it with a smile on your face. Hey, we might disagree, but it doesn't mean I love you any less. And in fact, I'm going to make some space for your perspective at my table. You're always welcome here. Regardless of your background, regardless of it. And we don't have to see things the same to love one another deeply. So, man, if, you, if you're trying to pick a gift today, if, you, if, if you're taking your pick, pick this one. Oh, go to work a little bit different. I know people get on your nerves. I know you're married. I know you got kids. I know people cut you off in traffic. I know people on Facebook annoy you. I get it. Use your gift to deal with them. Show a little bit of mercy. I think that there are times in our life where when we're trying to figure out what is it that the Lord is graced us to do. I think a lot of times that is shown in some of the things that we've actually been through. In fact, if you see this slide, if you're taking notes, uh, what you've been graced to do can be what comes easy for you that's difficult for others. Or it could be what you've been graced to do can be what you've been through that others need help with. So sometimes you're just going, man, I, I, I I don't know, Ryan, prophecy, that seems hard. Teaching, maybe, uh, encouragement. I mean, I guess I can start being nice to people. I mean, you're, you're kind of trying to figure that out. Here, here's next level. What have you been through? What have you been through? 
What have you been through that can help somebody else get through? Because you might have gone through a breakup. You might have been divorced. You might have been abused, overlooked, undervalued. You may have lost your job. You might have been going through a mental health crisis. You might have had a bad medical diagnosis. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Holidays have become quietly polarizing because we're trying to celebrate who's at the table and mourn who used to be there. And so when you're mourning who used to be there and you're watching all of your friends celebrate online and they're barbecuing tomorrow and things are going well, you're still going, I just wish my dad was here. Some of you have been there. Some of you are there now. And I just want you to know, regardless of what you've been through, God will not waste one moment of your life. God will not waste one moment of your life. And you might have some regrets and you might have some mishaps and some bad things can happen to good people. I just want you to know, God will not waste one moment of your life. I remember when my dad passed away. My dad passed away about six years ago. And I remember I wanted to cheat the system. I wanted to work my way through grief. And at the time, I'm just, I'm just on the team here. So I'm just like, all right, well, I'm just going to come here and serve. And they're just like, no, you're not. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? They said, just be. And I sat in that corner. It's the darkest corner of the church. And I have a soft spot for it. The reason I have a soft spot for it is I bought my eyes out in that corner and God met me in that corner. I believe God meets people in the dark. So you might be facing your darkest hour right now, and I just have to encourage you with this. Take notes in the dark. Perhaps it was God's grace that was carrying you through. Perhaps it's carrying you through right now, but you got to take notes while you're there because there's light at the end of the tunnel. And when you get out, somebody's going to need your notes for their darkest stay. Don't forsake what God tells you in the dark that's needed for the light. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all in full-time ministry. There's a gift in you. 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 And guess what? We all need each other's gift. You want to know why? Because there's some times when I'm teaching and I don't feel like giving mercy to nobody. But thank God I got you. To go, Ryan, 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 Ryan. Calm down, calm down. Ryan, 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 we're going to be good. Listen, I know, I know, I know. Like, I show them some mercy. And there's times where you don't feel like encouraging anybody, but you got that friend that's going, man, I've been graced for this. And we can get through this thing together. Each and every one of us has a different gift. I want to honor somebody today, and it's my, my beautiful wife, Amanda Leak. She is one of the most gifted people that I know. She is uh, extremely beautiful on the outside, but she just has a beautiful eye. Not just beautiful eyes. Like, I love her eyes, but I love how she sees things. She, she, uh, she's an interior designer, so she, be, she, be, she just, stuff just comes to life. And I'm like, how did you put that together? That make sense? And she just wrote a children's book, and it's called Jackson in the Not-So-Colorful Day. And trust me, when you get this book, you're going to find out she is gifted. And it's inspired by Covenant Church. Because what happens to this boy in this story is he's an artist that loves and is an expert with colors. And one day he wakes up and the world has lost its color. So he goes on a multicultural journey to find color in the world. And he gets different experiences with different nationalities. And all of a sudden his world becomes more colorful. The world comes to life. And, and our hope and prayer is that this would be a resource that parents are able to use to say, hey, uh, I don't know what color you are. I don't know what color your kids are, but I think you should value all the colors in the world. And the world's a little bit better when the world's just a little bit more colorful. And so uh, this is a QR code. You can scan this QR code. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. I need each and every one of y'all to... Uh, to be graced with the gift of generosity. I need you to buy a thousand each, okay? Okay, that's too much. 500 is cool too, whatever you got. I know everybody's on a different budget, okay? But I, I want you to, to get it on Amazon. And, and here's the deal. I just believe 
that this is, is different than my gift. Like I write regular books that are just black and white. Hers is full of color and actually takes work, okay? I just gotta have thoughts to put together. And I just go, I love celebrating other people's gift. Here's the deal. Yours might be in agriculture. You might understand farming at a level that the rest of us would be like, we just eat the food. We don't even know where it comes from. We just figured it out. But you can make a difference in agriculture. Maybe yours is a digital platform. Maybe you're a social influencer and you get things that other people don't. You understand how to create content at a level that most people don't. Maybe God has graced you with that gift. Maybe you sit around and you watch the news or you scroll on social media and you are disgusted at what you see in politics. Maybe that is a sign that maybe you should go into politics. Maybe God has graced you with the ability not to to be a person that is swayed by public opinion. Maybe you've got the gift that you don't care what people think about you. You just want to do what's right for people. Maybe for you, it's arts. Maybe for you, it's finance. Maybe for you, it's pharmaceutical. Maybe it's education for you. Maybe it's entertainment or real estate or, or sports. Or maybe God's put it on your heart to say, man, I think I, I think I want to write a book. You need to write a paragraph first before you could get a book. Listen, I'm here to let somebody know you've been graced with a gift and you should not waste your gift. The saddest stories in the world is when we watch someone we love waste their potential. What are they wasting? A gift. So my prayer today is that each and every person watching would walk in their calling. That they wouldn't just be a person that says, I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm just going to live my life by my will. And I'm not just going to live my life by other people's will. But no, I want to be a surrendered follower of Jesus that says, Lord, whatever it is that you want to do, my life is yours. And you have graced me with a gift. God, I thank you so much for each and every person under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that you would help us walk in our gift. Help us to test and approve what your will is for our life. Show us the direction that we are to go. God, I pray that you would begin to put people on our heart that you want to speak to this week. And in that moment when we're nervous, God, I pray that you would just give us the courage to walk in our gift that was not given to us by a man. It was given to us by you. Help us to walk in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I want to give each and every person under the sound of my voice, an opportunity of a lifetime. You might be visiting with a friend. You may have been away from church for a long time, and maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. You want to make things right with God. Maybe for you, you want to surrender your life to Jesus for the first time. Maybe today you said for the first time, Ryan, I didn't know I was graced with the gift. I I didn't know that God had a will for my life. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you today, If you say, man, Ryan, I I just, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. Guess what? This is the reason why we get together. It's for this very moment so that you have an opportunity to surrender your life to God. If that's you today, would you just slip up your hand and say, hey, Ryan, that's me. Ryan, that's me. Is there anybody? I see your hand, man. That's awesome. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? I see your little hand. That's awesome. Anybody else? I think I see a couple hands up there too. Hey, can we all say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my future, my relationships, my decisions, and my gifts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, amen. Come on, can we make some noise for every single person? that gave their heart to Christ. Best decision you've ever made. Hey, if you made that decision, we wanna put a a little booklet in your hand that just explains what to do now that you um, are a Christian. Uh, We'd love to give you one down here at the front. Our prayer team will be down here praying for people. You can also text the phrase, I am saved to the number 64600. Again, that's I am saved to the number 64600. 600 and we'll actually text you a digital link to that and you can download that to your phone 
or mobile device. Um, once again, that's I am saved to the number 64600. And uh, we would love to, to pray with you down here at the front and stay connected. Come on, once again, can we make some noise for every single person that gave their heart to Christ? My, my wife will actually be in the East Wing where we drop off our children actually signing books. We have some here today as well. So if you'd like to meet her and, and get your book signed, you can do that. It's a little cheaper here than Amazon because we like Covenant, okay? Just so you know. So go see my wife and, and say hello. Can I bless you before we go? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he cover you with his precious name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Happy Memorial Day.